Attention Apple shoppers. The Apple iPhone 7 Plus and Jet Black 7 are completely sold out. Sold out. Why are you even waiting in the store? No, no, no. You keep moving. Get out of here. They're not there. You should have pre-ordered at 12 a.m., but you didn't. So wow, wow. Now go. Go. What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. This is a big week for Apple releases with the new OSs and hardware, and like it happens almost every year, yep, iOS 10 had a rocky start during its first few hours of availability, you know, when almost everyone tries to get the update. Now, some users received an error during the update process telling you to plug it into your computer and iTunes, and then it required that phone to be restored. Not a good thing for people who commit the cardinal sin of not doing a backup before an update. It's almost as bad as going out wearing the same underwear two days in a row without turning them inside out. Almost. Now, the issues have been resolved. iOS 10 is now good to go, and plenty of you will love the new features like Raise to Wake or the all-new notification screen. But I don't know about you, with all those bells and whistles, my current iPhone 6S's battery is getting sucked dry in almost half the time. I know change is always tough, and overall, it's better. But there might be one thing that bugs you the insistence on iOS 10 to make us press the home button down to unlock the phone. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, if you want to do it without it, go to Settings, then General, Accessibility, find Home button, and then select Rest Finger to open. To open your phone with Touch ID without having to press the home button. It's subtle, it's kind of like iOS 9, I like it better, and now I've solved your first world problem. All right, iMessage is going to be a love and hate thing for me. Love because it can be fun at times. Hate? Well, have you seen that sticker app store? It's a mess. Like, everyone is just spamming the crap out of the sticker store. And are you really going to find anything other than just the downloads they recommend? I'm going hunting to pull some of the good ones. And it's a little out of control right now. But while you wait, I found a fun one that's perfect for the Apple Bite called Bad Apples, Good Apples. And you guessed it, it's a bunch of stickers of apples ranging from cute to total D-bags. Now, I'm giving away five codes for the sticker pack, and all you have to do is tweet me, at Brian Tong, with a good apple and bad apple of your own for iOS 10 to win. See, I made it easy on you. All right, early reviews are out for the iPhone 7, 7 Plus, the Apple AirPods, and the Apple Watch Series 2, and they literally echo everything we felt about them from last week's show. Apple iPhone 7 is a solid upgrade, nothing major, but it's waterproofing, speed, and battery life make it more useful, and the camera is an upgrade as well. Now, the iPhone 7 Plus is all about the dual lens and the phone to get for people who want the best camera on a mobile device. Almost every reviewer still feels the lack of a headphone jack is inconvenient, but Apple's forcing us to get used to it, and guess what? You probably will. But don't worry, something even better is coming next year. The New York Times review couldn't hold back and tucked in a line at the end of their iPhone 7 review that said, Apple is likely to continue making iPhones without headphone jacks, and next year's iPhone will have a full screen face with a virtual button built directly into the screen, according to two people at the company who spoke on condition of anonymity. See, it's another confirmation of Apple's plans to make a huge change with the rumored all-glass body, OLED screen, wireless charging, and yes, the elimination of a physical home button. Now, the Apple Watch Series 2 is really the Apple Watch that should have come out originally. It's better for swimmers and runners, but if you already have one and you don't really use GPS, with the new Watch OS 3, you really don't need a new Apple Watch. And that's if you even want one at all. Which brings us to the AirPods. Pretty much every reviewer loved the tech. The sound is about the same, but the looks will still hold a lot of you back. Tim Cook recently appeared on Good Morning America to tell us just how cool they really are. I've been wearing them for a while, and because they don't have wires on them, the wires tend to help the earbud to fall out, right? Because it right. applies weight on those. By snipping the wires, I have never personally had one fall out. And yes, finally, the first admission by Apple. They snipped them. Come on, Tim. You're not supposed to say that out loud. And you know what? That's a bad apple. In fact, you can find pre-release AirPods on eBay before they come out in October, just like the ones Tim talked about. But then, you know, he went on and had to say this. It's absolutely, they're absolutely magical as well. Please, please stop with this magical stuff. I know what magic looks like. And this is magic. 
Is, is it empty? Did you check it out? It's empty, and yeah. You, I and you collapsed it. it and you opened it up. Yep. And I want you to know it's empty. I'm going to show it to the audience, but it's black on black. And here's the wand. And here's the trick, Jimmy, you may have never seen. Borrow top hat, magic gesture, two taps, and out of the hat comes a rabbit. That's Hockey Puck, the rabbit <laughs> named oh after Joel God. Rickles. Wow. That really is magic. But you know what would have been really magical? If they somehow made the ear pods in black like these cool mock ups from the master, Martin Hajek. Now, I'm still waiting to see an actual exec wearing the AirPods, and until then, I'll still always have this. And that will never get old for me. Now, during the ABC interview, Tim Cook also commented in AR versus VR and said that augmented reality is the larger of the two, probably by far for him, because it gives people the ability to sit next to each other, be present, talk to each other, but also have other things that visually both people can see. He ended by saying Apple is high on AR in the long run. Okay, two quick notes. Swift Playgrounds is now available from Apple as a free iPad app on the App Store, and it helps kids and, you know, even some adults to learn how to code using Apple's Swift programming language for developing Mac and iOS apps. And Twitter is coming to the Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Xbox One with their new video app that will broadcast live streams of Thursday night NFL football along with games from the NBA, NHL, MLB, and others. You won't need a cable subscription to watch them, so you cord cutters who have been wanting more sports can check it out. And before we go, we wanted to announce the two winners from our Apple Byte Apple TV giveaway sweepstakes. Thanks to all of you who registered to enter in the U.S. And congrats go out to Paul Cowell from North Carolina and Cody Fitzgerald from Louisiana. And don't worry, I'm cooking something up for all you international Apple Biters that, you know, felt left out because I love you too. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at theapplebite at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, especially if you want to win those Bad Apple, Good Apple stickers. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another Bite of the Apple. Hey, what's up, fellas? You guys all watch the Apple Bite, right? You do? Yeah? Okay, well, uh, you know, can I, can I hop in over here? What? For reals? Damn, man. This little monkey.